Hello and welcome to chapter 3, part 2 of our fire team tutorial series. In the last episode we started work on our character's death, where they went into Ragdoll in a third person camera. Now in this episode we're going to go through the process of respawning our characters back into the game world. So let's get started. Okay, so in the last episode we worked on our characters able to shoot and kill each other, but we haven't done the respawning part. So to do the respawn, we have to tell our client here how long they want to be waiting for that respawn. Let's go back to our first person character, and you're looking for the enter death state, which is the one that's run on owning client, because it only, it's only the client that needs to respawn. So we're going to go across to the end here after the activate, and do set timer by event. And the event we're going to do, we're going to drag down and do create event. And then the drop down, we're going to choose create matching event. And we're going to call this one request respawn. The way respawning works is that the player has to request it from the server. Can they respawn? And then the server will tell them to do so. But this request server is a request respawn is happening. Uh, is, is the approach to take when you want to request that respawn from the server. So we've got to get this from the owning client's character all the way up to the game server game mode. So we've got this set up. Um, we want to put in a time frame. So let's say, uh, say five seconds. Okay, it's not looping for obvious reasons. And hit compile. So on that request respawn here, we're going to get the player controller. And we want to cast that to our particular controller. Uh, oh, we don't have one. Cool. We'll make one. So let's make a custom controller in here. Open class, player controller. We call it game player controller. Okay, and in that player controller, you need to make a event called um, respawn request. Okay. Okay. So if we go back to our player character, we then can cast this to our particular game player controller. And from there, you can call the respawn request. So just double click on it, take you to it. There it is. Uh, so this is going to be replicated onto the server side. So we can go back to our replicates and change it onto run on server. Now, this will only ever run on the server. We don't ever want it to run on the local client. We only want the server to have control over this. So this is where we use a switch has authority node. And this basically just uh, filters out whether or not this uh, is the client version or the server version. So authority is server, remote is client. So if it is server, we were going to get the game mode. And we then want to create our, uh, a custom game mode for our game here. Now, we don't currently have it, so let's go ahead and create our custom game mode. Um, we can make a new folder here for systems, I guess. Systems. And inside here, we're going to create a blueprint class game mode. But we don't want to use game mode base. We use the normal just game mode. This is because game mode, rather than game mode base, has a, a few more functions and a few more things exposed to you to mess about with and so it's quite useful to get so we're going to use this one like that and we call this one online game mode yeah. now when you open it up we do need to make sure we are changing our player controller class here to our game player controller uh hud class we want to change the in-game hud uh default pawn we're going to change that to our first person character and everything else I think you want to leave as is for now. Hit compile and save there. So back on our player controller. We've got get game mode. We're going to cast to our online game mode. It goes into authority, remember? Okay, so next we need to tell it to do the handle the respawn. So that's going to be a thing that's on our game mode. Let's go to a game mode here. And we're going to create a custom event called the spawn. Okay, so respawn uh, is going to be uh, have needs a know which controller it's respawning. So we're going to make an input on it. 
and that'll be hold on and we're going to take this here and change that to a controller type okay uh in fact actually let's make it a player controller sorry player controller. there we are okay so in here we want to get the current controlled pawn so get uh controlled pawn because we don't want to leave the corpse there we want to get rid of it so i'm going to drag that out and then do destroy actor i'll get rid of it okay then what we want to do is restart the player in the game because it's the game mode restart player is one of the default things we have in here right click do restart player and we can plug that in but we only want to do this if the controller we're sending across to it is still valid so they haven't quit the game or something we still want that to be a check so we're going to drag that out and do a valid check let's insert that before our restart player happens just in case they have logged off or something like that we do is valid there and the new player is this controller here just plug that into okay and save there okay so we've got our respawn event on our game mode we've got our game player controller here calling the game mode here and we're going to call respawn and controller will be self and then on the character we're doing a request to the controller that hey we want to respawn okay so let's take a look at that in game now before testing the game we do need to make sure our game mode is one that's being chosen here so let's go to our world settings and change the game mode override to our on uh, our uh, online game mode save there and then hit play okay so now if i shoot and then after a few seconds, hopefully, he should respawn. There we are. Down he goes. As the player, other player, I move around. Where I'm going. Shoot. This guy. Down as well. Now you can see when I've respawned, my UI has not updated to reflect the changes that have happened here. So we need to tell our UI to update and reconnect to itself. So in order for the UI to update, we have to somehow tell it that we've respawned as a new character. Now the controller hasn't changed. The controller is still the same. So therefore the HUD class hasn't changed. That's still the same. So we just need to tell the HUD to update itself and its references. So let's go into our game player, uh, sorry, our first person character. And go to the begin play of our character here. Okay. And on here, we need to get hold of the player uh, controller and get the HUD class. And then from there, we're going to cast to our in game HUD. And from that, I should be able to get access to my head up display. I get my in-game HUD and then from there I can get my health bar and I'm going to tell my health bar to fetch the references which is an event we made way back in the first chapter and that should refresh what references it has and also relink up the binding events so let's do that and take a look at that in action Okay, so if I go in here, oh guy, and he goes. Okay, so he's respawned, no health, but when I shoot him, his health is updated. So that just means we have to tell our health here to update when they've spawned in as well. So let's go back into our character here. So this will just fetch references to actually update and change the UI. We need to call the update health. We can call update health here and bring that up and plug that in to there. 
Now we should see it respawn and the health bar should fill up itself, uh, fill itself back up. Let's just go back into this. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Down it goes. And up it comes with a whole new health bar. And there we have it, we've now got a fully functioning respawning system in our game. Now, most games come with a kill announcement and letting people know that someone has been killed by someone else. So in the next episode, we're going to make a start on our kill announcement screen, showing players' names up on the top right-hand corner when they've been killed by another player. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can watch that episode plus many more from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone. I'm ready to play now. Put me in the game now. I came here to prove it. I'm ready to do it. I can't be afraid now. Put me on the stage now. I'm ready to rage now. I feel like an animal stuck in a cage and I'm ready to break out. My time, my 